Well, we're there now. <laughs> um, so as an artist, I always enjoy working collaboratively as I did in the shoe project, uh, which was one of the first things I did in the library. I got people to bring their shoes in um, and, uh, and tell me something about their shoes and I photographed their shoes with them helping me set them up. Um, the next day I printed them out and then hung them in the gallery here. And you can see Richard looking at his shoes here. <clears throat> um, as with most artists, I'm fascinated by the way light changes and enhances the world around us. And as I'm always, and I'm always looking for that special image. Now this is the image that um, illustrates me on the website at the moment. It was taken in Norfolk uh, one evening. Um, I use my, the other thing I do is to use my garden as a dark room um, <clears throat> to expose and create images using alternative photography processes uh, such as cyanotypes and chlorophyll printing I do. Um, right, and then in printmaking I, um, I'm developing my skills in etching. It's something I was always been quite fascinated with. Um, and experimenting using natural objects and um, also looking at the ways that things trans as uh, etching transforms my own photographic images. Uh, the way I work usually is by developing a project around a theme or within a context. For, for example, with this uh, particular um, image here, um, I had a theme of yellow for an exhibition I was working on. Um, <clears throat> and I was doing a workshop with other photographers at the time and talking to them and discussing, um, they pointed, helped me point myself towards powder as for the color yellow. And those are the sorts of yellow powder we probably all know about, a custard, mustard. And at the time, turmeric was very trendy. Um, so I decided to investigate its uses. And um, the turmeric handprints here are part of a Hindi ritual, which is used to banish evil spirits from the corner of a new room that you might have. So you go around putting handprints all over the walls of a new room. And it's one of my photographer friends who um, happened to be moving into a new house and who's, who is um, from the Hindi religion, and she kindly lent me her house to, to um, did the handprints for me. Thank you, Sonia. Um, right, now what I'm going to do is introduce you to Michael, um, and hopefully he'll tell you more about the way he works. Michael. Better unmute. Um, thank you very much, Lizzie. So I'm Michael Lee. Uh, I'm a photographic artist, um, and I'll, I guess I'm going to share with you a little bit about my my practice um, by sharing my screen. I guess Here it goes. Okay. So um, thank you, Richard, for your introduction. Actually, quite useful that you started and you mentioned. At heart of a painter because in fact I was a painter. Um, I painted for quite a long time. Uh, my master's I was a painter. Um, but the more I painted the more I, I felt like I needed uh, something to reference and that reference often came from photography. Um, and you know if I'm going to be perfectly honest I don't think I was as good a painter as I would like to have been. Um, but the more I got into using the photography the more I discovered I could do interesting things with it. 
so this is a painting that's quite large, it's of uh, bramble, uh, amazing sort of colours going on, um, and it's from this photograph. So technically it's probably not the best photograph in the world, but I was using um, photography to inform my painting. Um, and I did this for a while and I was looking for painterly responses with the camera. So as you can see, there's sort of washy elements and sort of quite painterly um, marks in there, which I thought I could translate into paint, but alas, it didn't quite work. Um, but what did happen through that process was that I started to explore what my camera could do. Uh, and I looked at multiple exposures, which actually I'll come to a few in a bit. Um, and then this, which is a photograph taken in Venice a number of years ago. Uh, and it's the sort of work that I'm, I'm best, uh, I think I'm probably best known for. Uh, it happens all in the camera. Uh, there's myself walking alongside uh, my fiance at the time. Uh, in Venice, people coming towards us, people coming against us. I move the camera, the world moves in front of me, the camera does some uh, interesting things, and then three images are cobbled together to create this, which, you know, when I looked down at the camera, I sort of thought, wow, I've done it, this is it, I'm gonna, this is how I'm gonna make work from now, which of course doesn't happen because nothing ever came out the same. But I did uh, develop the project for quite a number of years, and I got a number of different results out of it. This is also in Venice uh, in the early days. Uh, I took the camera inside. So this is the National Gallery. Um, again, you've got people moving, you've got myself moving. Uh, and then there is a real element of chance, uh, a real element of luck for how these things come out. Most of them uh, end up sort of in the recycle bin, but a few every now and again just really work. Uh, after a while, I guess I learned how to hone the technique a little bit more so I sort of knew a little bit what I was doing by this point. Uh, this is a drag upwards to sort of pull the colours of the, the city in. Uh, again there's luck there because a bus comes past at exactly the right moment and, uh, and so developed my work. Um, well, I took it to extremes to see what the camera could do. Again I was always sort of looking for um, painterly responses and interesting responses using the camera. Um, I did try and paint from these, uh, but eventually I realised that the paintings were stale and actually what was interesting was the photographic elements and what I was doing with the camera. Uh, life, uh, I guess, kind of changed a little bit and a couple of little kids, which you may hear screaming, I do apologise if you do, um, one is teething. Uh, anyway, so life changes and I could no longer sort of uh, manage that kind of work and I guess the project um, kind of concluded itself and I started going back to the multiple exposures. Um, city base, a lot of London work, uh, a lot of energy, a lot of movement, still performative. So there's still my own movements as well as the movements of people in front of me. Um, less chance, I'd say, involved. Um, but lots of heavy textures, lots of color, um, lots of movement. And again, there is that element of chance. Uh, I guess this is probably where I was up to when the pandemic hit. Um, actually, this image um, I showed uh, next to Lizzie at the Crouch and Open Studios when we last had it. It uh, was in the, in the town hall in the Fly Gallery. Um, and in fact, actually, leads me on to asking you, Lizzie, about your piece. So I actually, so I showed with Lizzie. Uh, we had a wonderful show in the town hall. And at the end of the show, um, I had to buy one of Lizzie's um, etchings, which is actually just in my hallway there, which I look at the morning on the way in. It's wonderful. I love it. It's, she showed it in the introduction, and I was going to ask you just basically how you do it, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, we'll go back to that. Ooh. Right, um, I'll go to the next one. I think you've got the wrong one. Right, so um, I this actually is an etching, as I mentioned before, and I don't know if you've looked in your garden and have hydrangeas. Well, when when um, hydrangeas die, the flowers somehow they they uh, form this shape and and become almost like skeletons of themselves. And I happened to find these on the ground and thought that they would make a very interesting 
uh, photograph to start with. Um, but then with etching, I thought they'd make a very interesting etching. Um, what I really like about this is that it's the fine lines that are like a drawing and drawing yeah. was something I couldn't do. Um, and uh, when, when I was as an artist and art school, I became a photographer mainly because I felt I couldn't draw the image I wanted. Um, and basically what we did, I did was to put the flowers on a sensitive plate and expose them in the way that you would if you were doing photo etching. Um, and, sorry to interrupt, that all the, the tiny uh, lines and veins and things, so you're actually scrubbing ink into it and then wiping it away? Uh, yes, so you put ink into it, so we rub ink into it. Um, once it's been exposed, it goes through another process and then it's, um, you have to rub ink into it very carefully, trying not to leave too much on the, the, the outside here. So, um, uh, but you know, there are occasions where you get a little bit there and possibly here, this difference here is because of that uh, stem, which is quite thick. I think, so I think by the way, those imperfections are, are what make it so wonderful. It's, it's neither photographic, nor is it uh, a, a drawing. It's somewhere, you know, it's got that inky um, beautifulness and somewhere in between. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I love those bits. Yes, I, I quite like that because of that, mm. I have to say. Are we, um, something else you, we were talking about, I think, ah. was these. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to, I was going to ask you how, basically, how you do it. Um, it's, they're so incredible. Um, right. right, these are what we call chlorophyll printing, um, and they're done on the leaves themselves. Um, this was part of a project I was doing called Reinventing Beauty. Um, and it, what I felt was so nice about it was you were using something very natural and creating something different with it. And basically, if you leave a bucket or something on your lawn, you get a mark. Mm. But possibly after a couple of days, you get a brown mark. And this is using that process. So what we have is a piece of acetate with a photograph on them. Um, and it's placed onto, it. I'm gonna show you the next slide. You flip the, the acetate, so is the re image reversed? The acetate is a positive. Okay. So if you look at this hit stage here, you can see photograph Alan, one of the artists, and um, the others here, and, and they're positive images that are placed on top of the leaf. And how, how, long, you, how long are you leaving them there for? Um, well, it depends actually on the weather. <laughs> this is <laughs> terrible. Um, the, the shortest time for any of them that I've done has been possibly a day in, in this country because the sun isn't that strong. Um, but um, some of them were 72 hours. So you're, you have to have quite a lot of patience yeah. to do this. How do, you, the, how do you know if they're done? Uh, because um, they Can go yellow. This is uh, at, okay. at the beginning. So the edge of this leaf here will go that brownie yellow color. Yeah. Um, and these little bags, these are bags full of water and um, cotton to keep the leaf alive because if you left a leaf out uh, for 72 hours it would be dead yeah. if it didn't have any water basically. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I've got one more to show you here. Um, something, this is 
was a mistake, but I think it's a mistake you like, isn't it, Michael? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I can see there's that there's a multiple exposure. There's another exposure in there. You've moved it slightly, haven't you? Or it's moved. Yes. Yeah, so you can see around the back of the the head. That's right. Yeah. Um, basically, I was having a look to see if it was ready, yeah. and then decided it wasn't quite. So uh, put it back, and obviously didn't put it back in the, quite the right place. It's quite an interesting effect. I love it. I love it. I think it's wonderful. It's brilliant. I mean, you could, well, I'm sure I'd probably love to play around with moving them and layering them and all that sort of thing, but it's... Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> on your moving. Shall we have a look at one of yours now, perhaps? Sure, sure. Which one are we going for? Um... The one that I quite like, I, I think about having a solarized image at the background. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, can everyone see that? Is that right? Yes, this is yeah. the one. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Can you tell me how you did this? Uh, again, yeah, it's, it's my technique. It's um, using the HDR function. For those of you who've got a a, a smartphone have probably got an HDR button on there and what it's meant to do is take a few exposures at once and put them together. Um, so if you actually if you Google HDR if you're not, you're not familiar with it you'll see these kind of terrible gaudy um, Eiffel Tower type images with glowing backgrounds and extra kind of detail and things and I mean it's a style and you know people do it um, but instead of keeping everything still I've got an awful lot of movement here. So in fact, this one here was a really strong drag up and I, I, I know I can remember that um, because of the, this flat kind of, I can wave my mouth, here you go, this flat kind of uh, color around here um, where the camera can't compute um, the information. So sort of a lot of information. Um, and then there's this very peculiar um, glow and outline, which is reminiscent of the HDR and sort of biro like um, I can zoom in to the outline up there. Um, so what, what, I guess what I like about it is that it's got those qualities and yet it's still photographic um, by nature. And, you know, people are quite used to moving their cameras uh, in the dark and getting lights that move. So I've got the static and the moving elements in that. Um, and it is also, I guess, one of a kind. Um, so yeah. Can I ask you if you have, if, when you're taking an image, do you have a theme to them or do you have context? Uh, not really. I sort of group them over the years and try to sort of compile them and, and, and uh, work on that. But to be honest, I don't really. It's, it's more about uh, my own experience, my own observations, my own feelings of, of being out uh, and in the environment and trying to create some sort of personal uh, or some painterly response to that. Um, so, and it, you know, it's often governed by those elements. So, you know, light, where I am, subject matter, uh, and also, you know, sort of how I'm, how I'm feeling, uh, and then how I sort of, uh, I guess, deal with the images afterwards. Um, so I guess yes and no, really. Yeah. 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 Can we have a look at the black and white one? Yeah. yeah, this one. Yeah, and is this one double images or? Yeah, it's, a, it's the same one? thing. Um, so it's the same thing. This is uh, again three exposures in one, um, and it was very on in my early on in my my uh, exploration of the the function on the photo, on the camera, and. Yeah, I mean, I remember very clearly actually turning up my um, depth of field for this uh, and just trying out a few new things and all of a sudden um, it felt like magic was happening on the camera. Um, and it is, yeah, a sort of a heart back to a, a bygone era of analog film, but yet it's got these very strange digital moments or um, sort of shadows of, of uh, things and yet sort of quite ghostly. Um, quite a fan of this one, I'm glad you picked that one out actually. Um, so yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I was going to ask you, um, yeah. basically, what you've been doing for the last year. 
Um, how's your how's your lockdown been? Um, what have I been doing for lockdown? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shall I share screen again? Please do. Right. Come on. All right. Right. Um, well, this is I've been experimenting again and using a sim similar. Um, this is an alternative photographic process. This is called a lumen process and basically is putting flowers and uh, you can see this is a well you might not this is a bluebell here um get me <laughs> here from the garden um, sorry how, how, Nizzy, how big is this how big is it uh, <laughs> i think it's 10 by 12 um and in in um in Crouch End, we have a photographic group of, of London independent photography. And uh, we were all um, communicating by WhatsApp. And uh, somebody had started experimenting with this. And I said, I'd like to do it. And very kindly ever drove around and let, lent me some photographic paper because I hadn't um, hadn't actually got any. So this is really, um, we've really been working together and chatting, sharing. Wonderful. Eh? During lockdown. So um, just, just before you move on, okay. So the stem there, that's, that's basically a 3D print. That's yeah. imprinted because it's three dimensional, the, the stem yeah. has depth. So it presses into the paper and, and uh -huh raises it if you like yeah um this actually the next is uh example this is my screen um this is for exposing thing um and if you have a look at the tulip in the middle was i just took it out of the vase so it, it has some dampness in it whereas um these bits here were dried. I have a collection of dried leaves and the way it appeared at the end was you see all the the yeah. orangey is the live plant. And incredible. The, yeah, white. Yeah, so it's a very interesting process. And how long do you expose these for? Um, I think I've exposed this one for about an hour. It was quite sunny at the time. If you remember last April, May, mm. it was much sunnier and warmer than it is now. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, um, next thing I've been doing, I've been doing some cyanotypes, which we all do. Every day, my husband, um, and expose them in the garden, but every day my husband and I have been walking this uh, part of the new river. It's the, the section which runs parallel to Whiteman Road, as those of you who live in this area will know. Um, and I've been following it throughout the seasons and this was last April um, and we had some really sunny days. So we had nine sunny days, 15 cloudy days and only six days of rain. Um, and basically it was watching how the river had changed. If you look at this one up in the, the top left and this one at the bottom, it's all begun to green. And that's the stage we're going through at the moment. Um, these are just done with your phone, it looks like. These are just taken on my phone yeah. because I found carrying, quite, I've got, quite a heavy camera and I find carrying the camera around for exercise was restricted. Now what I have also done, because you asked to see this one Michael, is um, I have photographed, uh, these are January this year when we had snow and quite, quite sort of different. Um, the light is so different. Yeah, yes. 
I, this one here actually is was an evening, whereas in um, with the other one, we always walked early morning because, like most of us, I think we were probably quite worried about meeting other people and things. Um, so we used to go out very early morning. When we came to January, we were not getting up so early. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, basically, <laughs> we got that sort of light. Uh, one other thing I've been doing, um, I lived in a street where basically I only knew a few people around me. Um, and I uh, um, decided it was quite a good idea to get to know a few more if it was possible. We had brilliant WhatsApp for our street, like I'm sure many of you have had. Um, and so I decided it would be nice to photograph people. I'm always photographing people and, and things. Um, and so I took lots of photographs of uh, 60 of the households. Um, this is a road with terraced houses, some of which are split into flats. And if I show you a close up, um, they're all grouped in twos. So did everyone oblige? Did everyone just happily come out of their house and have their photo taken? Um, some of them didn't. There were a couple who, who didn't want to. Um, somebody said their job was quite a sensitive job. So they didn't really want to be photographed. I saw there was one in the just in the window and the other oh, go, right. go back one there was just a window yeah. wasn't there? there's one just up here sorry i can't zoom in and out on this program um which is a lady called anne who um always used to walk up and down the road um talking to everyone delivering evening newspapers um and obviously during covid she uh decided that she couldn't do that sort of thing um, and was sheltering with her sister. Uh, so she didn't even want to come out of, to have a photograph taken. Um, but she looked through the window and I th actually she's holding her cat. So the cat is more in the window than she is. Um, <laughs> right. But um, this lady here in green is Zoe, who very kindly, during, during the summer I wasn't very well and I was preparing for an exhibition showing these images. And Zoe designed this banner for me, um, which she then slotted in all the photographs, um, which, you know, I think works very well because the, they're grouped. The drawings are all based of the actual Doorways, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I show you close up this one, this is a friend of mine, Michelle, who um, was shielding, and I love this photo because it you know, looks as though she's very timid about coming out. Yeah, amazing. It does look like the first time she stepped out of the house for, for months. Yeah, yeah. But as you see, there are the doors are like this. Mm -hmm. It's great, it's an amazing piece. Um, but what was wonderful about these photos and things was that we were able to um, sort of get to know more people and introduce each other. So it was a great community project. Um, the last thing I'll tell you about is I have been going back to the shoot project and, oops, sorry, I'll go back again. <laughs> and looking at different ways of, um, actu of actually presenting the project itself. And probably I will take some more photographs, but I collected people's writing. So people would write about the shoes. And um, I've, I've decided that it would be quite nice to use that writing beside the shoes rather and which would tell you more about them 
and about the person than, um, than actually type underneath them. And I'm also going to make an artist's book, um, which will be shoebox size, so long and thin, um, with a series of these images. So Lovely. that's what I've been doing. What have you been doing? Just before you go, you know, I, I, I saw these were the first things I saw uh, when I went around the Crouch and Open Studios the year that we moved into the area. And yeah. We going at the Alex, and I remember seeing these, and they left a quite yeah. an impression, actually. Um, I love that project. Um, okay, what have I been doing? Um, so, I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, so, I got up to here, I guess, before, um, and um, I was working with these multiple exposures. They were sort of quite high energy bursts. Um, but as lockdown happened, and I couldn't go into town anymore, um, and I was spending a lot of time walking basically the baby to sleep um, or taking the little boy out for, on, on his bike, we were basically in the woods, there was nowhere to go. So I took the camera with. Um, and often found myself rooted to the spot, which became quite interesting because I started to try to encapsulate uh, the entirety of my environment in a single image. So this is again the same process, uh, multiple exposures in the camera, um, but looking at the micro and the macro um, all in one go. So there's some slightly more abstracted images, um, but whereas before I was sort of taking these sharp bursts and um, sort of slightly flamboyant movements. I guess I started to slow down a little bit, think a bit more about my environment. Um, and the idea was, was the images going into these ought to work um, in their own right. So I was trying to create a decent photograph and have those decent photographs to all be um, part of it. it was quite a challenge and it was quite interesting. And again, of course, like all this sort of thing, there were a lot of failures, but um, I did enjoy it and it did teach me um, to slow down, calm down a little bit, take a deep breath um, and also maybe that um, my artwork doesn't always have to be that full or busy um, so even something like this for example I stopped shooting uh, instead of taking nine pictures and hammering out lots of texture and um, complication uh, I found a little bit of peace um, with my artwork, which was quite interesting, um, really. Um, and doing so, um, I started to concentrate on the images that were going into these. So this is just a photograph shot through the trees. Um, and I've gone for it, as you could probably tell, because it's painterly, because it has um, marks and lines and um, those sort of things that I was sort of always searching for with painting, but yet doing with photography. So, right, can we go back to yeah. the others? Some of the others are double exposure. They, they're all multiple exposures. So this one's probably two or three images. Some will be up to nine, um, but they're all in the camera. And, and I sort of, you know, stop when I feel like it's done. Uh, so these take a little bit more time than sort of just taking lots in, in consecutive order. Um, so those are all the multiple exposures. Um, but then I got, very much into just taking a photograph. So uh, this is shot through the trees. Uh, you can see the sun is over here. These lines are all from the holly bush and it's simply out of focus. Um, and, you know, I sort of found that I could discover, I can create the sort of mark making that I can never, um, I guess, do with paint or, or certainly do um, without it looking sort of forced or contrived. So. Um, you know, standing there, shooting towards the sun, twisting my focus, moving ever so slowly um, and trying to sort of, I guess, create some sort of abstract composition. Um, so, yeah. Um, and this was, again, just shooting through the trees, looking for um, paint marks, daubs and so on. Um, yeah. Oh, yes, I want to ask you about the, this, there's a bit in the corner there yeah. which is in focus. Was that intentional? Uh, no, actually, um, completely not intentional. Sometimes they have um, 
components that are in focus and sometimes not. It does help actually with this one because it gives it a bit of a frame of reference. Um, so you sort of start to read what you're seeing a little bit clearer. Um, but that's not my intention. My intention is to create um, a composition that works in its own right um, with, without regard to focus. Um, so that's what I was doing. They're not necessarily finished pieces, uh, but in doing so, it sort of led me back to where we started with the bramble. Um, and I'm back in the bramble fields and just obsessing over these blues and purples uh, and the colours that I'm getting out of the decaying bramble uh, and trying to get them, uh, again, painterly, washy um, kind of responses from the natural world. Um, busy, you know, it's pretty much always got sun coming through um, and the colour um, is all generated from what's in front of me. So these crazy kind of blues and purples, um, just, uh, yeah, really wonderful um, and kind of lovely to reignite my passion for photography. Um, um, yeah. Um, I was just going to say, um, do you enhance the colour at all? Uh, my, yeah, a little bit. So as you're looking through the viewfinder, what, what comes out the other end is never going to be the same. So there are the colours there. So it's a, a matter of um, pulling the lights and darks a little bit um, when I get back in, but I'm not changing the colour, I'm not altering it. Um, these, these are basically the colours that are there. Um, and it, re it really is extraordinary. Um, it's quite difficult to, to get. Uh, and again, there's lots of mistakes and every now and again, uh, get a little bit in, in focus and some not. But something like this, uh, I guess I'm just looking to calm down again, uh, slow down, uh, look for simpler shapes. Um, and I guess this is probably where I'm up to now, um, which is to sort of reduce um, those leaves and fauna to, uh, flora, sorry, to, um, yeah, to these kind of shapes. And you get all sorts of interesting things coming out. Um, someone likened this to a washing line the other day, someone picked out a weird alien creature on the right. Uh, I do have one that actually looks like a, that actually looks like a chicken. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Um, again, they're not necessarily, I don't know how they're going to sit um, finally or, or you know, how they'll actually look when it comes to being finished. But yeah, that's been it. Um, it's been quite an interesting journey. Um, a little bit introspective, um, mostly because there wasn't the rest of the, um, the world to get stuck into. But yeah, yeah, that was me and two little kids. Um, okay. Right. Uh, are we going to take questions now, or are we? We're giving you. Um, each of us is going to give you a, perhaps something you might like to try it yourselves. But um, are we having questions first, do you think, or should we? Should we do let's, do, let's do the takeaway and then we will take questions afterwards and then if people want to leave. Should we do that? Yeah. Yeah? Used uh, so, do you know what, I'll carry on from where I was because it's quite useful. So for me, um, what I'd like you to do, um, those of you that are interested, is you may take your smartphone and put your camera on. Um, you don't need a clever camera for this. Um, you just need your fairly basic phone. And you are looking for uh, sunlight coming through any kind of leaves, any kind of trees. Um, and then taking your fingers and doing that thing where you're zooming in a little bit. Doesn't matter if it goes a bit blurry. Uh, don't need to worry about shaking it or moving it. But just have a look to see if you can tap the screen, abstract your image, and to see if you can start to look at some of these things um, with a fresh kind of eye. Um, and the wonder of these for things, if you can move them around and really kind of um, and have a look at your uh, composition. The sun was out, now I'll show you my, my flowers, but I'm not gonna do any more of a demonstration than that. But please feel free to email me, send me anything that you come up with. I'd love to see them uh, and give you feedback or chat about it. It would be great to see um, what people do. Um, and you, Lizzie, I believe we're gonna show me how to make those leaves. I'm going to try. I'm going to share my screen again because that makes life easier. We hope. Uh, I'm just going to tell you, give you a little bit of instruction. 
Right. Right. I'm going to suggest that you take a leaf that you think would be quite nice to uh, put an image on. Oh, where's it gone? Sorry. Um, and if you take uh, something like an old picture frame and take take the back out and, and the front and put a, put a leaf on. Like this. You could also, um, what I have seen is uh, with a cucumber plant, somebody used a cucumber leaf and then put some other flowers on top um, and expose that to the sun. So you could, you could have a go at doing that. I mean, it is re really rewarding and there are no chemicals involved in it. Um, I have still got, I'm going to try and do this. I've still got one of these leaves here. Um, and although they're very fragile, it doesn't seem to have changed very much. I've kept it in the book and it, it's just a really nice thing to do. It's a, quite an easy thing to do with children as well um, and quite quite a unique thing to try okay but you need a bit of patience we're definitely going to have a go um have a go though yeah have a go. that's great have we got any questions uh yeah, it's so it, it's Richard back. That that was wonderful, really enjoyable, and great to see the new work. And and in the chat, there's lots of, of positive comments about the new work, in particular about work emerging from lockdown, and the yeah. way, as Michael was saying, people slow down and it, it made people think and and take a more sort of contemplative um, approach. Um, but yeah, all those positive comments. Well, I'm going to concentrate on the questions that have come up. Um, and I've been noting them down like mad as they've been appearing, um, but they're all here anyway. Um, so let's have a look. Um, Jenny asked about Michael's Instagram handle, um, and then I think we had a response to that actually. Um, but you can you can check out that one. Uh, Patricia Ruddle um, asked, "Is the leaf etching process the solar plate process?" Lizzie. Sorry? Is the leaf etching process the solar plate process? Uh, no, it's not. It was, um, the, the plate was already treated and it came treated, um, I'm quite not quite sure what it's called, but it was just a coated, photographically coated plate. Okay. Um, I'll just check there's one new message come in chat um oh that was just a thank you uh okay um claire louise and and, and as i say people's names if, if if they want to um um pop up they're very welcome to um so do you only do the chlorophyll printing uh, for portraits was one of her questions no no i have done them for um for to uh, using newspaper so basically it can be anything that um, you put put over the the plant over the leaf so I mean the Im your image can be anything I've seen some really nice um, old newspaper cuttings put on top of a leaf um, and I know there's one artist who actually used those images and put lots of comments about Brexit um, on the leaves as well. Okay. And, and, and she had a second question, which you've partially answered, is are there any alternatives to using acetate, which are more environmentally friendly? So, um, use... Yes, probably using other, other plants. Uh, other, um, I also did some paper cuts which I put on top of leaves so I made a pattern um, and that worked quite well. Um, you, can, you could be really creative and use anything. Yeah, okay. 
that sounds great. Um, Ruben asks, what type of leaf did you use and, and how do you do the colours? Right. Uh, I used honesty leaves for most of mine. Wow. Um, it was try, um, trial and error, but I happened to have uh, some honesty plants in the garden. Um, and the most successful ones had been in the shade. The leaves are quite need to be quite young, so they've got quite a lot of chlorophyll in them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's cool. Um, and ever asked, uh, how do you fix it? Actually, I haven't fixed it. Ah. The reason uh, I haven't, um, the way I preserve them is in a book at the moment. I haven't fixed them. Sorry, but just like that. Um, I haven't fixed them. Do they, they, sorry, to interrupt, they naturally harden. So you're it waving it around, it, it looks more sort of cardboard like than it did um, as yeah, a leaf. It does, doesn't it? It's, it's like a pressed flower, yeah. but, but because it's uh, honesty, it seems to be tougher than some yeah. other ones I've got. Uh, I can't if I've got any others. I can't find any others. Yeah, it seems to be tougher than most of them. I mean, this was trying on something that didn't work quite. So that was trying on an ivy leaf that didn't work. Um, no, they do become quite tough, but quite brittle as well at the edges. Right. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Um, Michael, one for you from Stella. Can you explain how you do the multiple exposures, please? Um, yes, I can. Um, it's actually quite straightforward. With the multiple exposures, they are um, simply photographs on top of photographs. Um, so my camera is a very clever camera, and it has the ability to take photographs on top of photographs. And I set how many I want to do, uh, and off I go. Um, I actually did quite a few originally in Crouch End a number of years ago, sort of driving through traffic, which became quite dangerous, so I stopped doing that. Um, <laughs> and now, um, now I sort of just, yeah, take it a bit slower um, and layer them on top of each other. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Uh, and I wanted to know, I'll allow myself a question, about the colour in your more recent work, Michael, because I kept seeing like a blue and a, and a, a sort of beigey colour working yeah. in the same photos. Did, um, does that arise from the process? No, um, it, it's, it's there. Um, oh, right. So again, the, the colour, you know, it, I guess is enhanced to an, to an extent, um, but it's not like uh, it's been made up. So uh, I'm simply using the colours uh, in front of me. Um, you know, it's, I guess uh, cleaning out the shadows a little bit. Um, and yeah, um, but they are in fact there. So I'm sort of on the hunt, I guess, for the colour. Um, yeah, so okay. I sort of, scrambling around the bramble for example trying to find the you know the blues and the purples and getting caught in it all and yeah yeah okay i like spiky things <laughs> um yeah um, and julie has a question for both of you how do you know you've finished your work how do you know a piece is finished uh, yeah i mean <laughs> uh yeah it's it's, it's impossible i so you I end up, if I've printed it and I've sold it, it's finished. <laughs> uh, until then, I can change it and do as much as I like. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's, and some of these, you know, especially the things I've just recently shown, they may come out in a completely different form in, in a couple of years' time. Um, it's, it's very hard to know. I don't know how you feel about that, Lizzie. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not so worried about selling it, as my husband will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, bas basically, I think it's when I get enough out of it, when I've, I've experimented with it enough and I've got bored with it, you know. <laughs> yeah, so like a project I might be doing, I might come to the end of it or I might have exhibited it and think, right, that's it. Okay. Um, let's just have a look. Um, oh. I might have missed one. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, so Liz asked, how does the photo transfer to the leaf? No chemicals, but it's just the reaction of the light, isn't it, onto the It is. It's, uh, 
it's the reaction that you could, if you put something on grass or something like that, that that's all it is. There's no chemical involved in it. And partly the reason I don't want to preserve or make them more stable is that I think it's such a natural thing that I don't want to put chemicals or wax on it um, because, because, you know, that, that in a way contam contaminates the leaf for me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and Liddy, do you use the glass of the frame on top of the leaf? Um, well, when I'm exhibiting it, Liddy, is that what you're saying? Or, or exposing it. You can unmute yourself, Lydia, and I can see her at the top. <laughs> exposing it, exposing it. Exposing it, yeah. You need the, you need the uh, glass on top, glass or, um, to uh, keep it flat because you wouldn't get a crisp edge to the plant. I mean, the, the cyanotype behind me had really heavy um, glass on it to keep it flat. And that's how you've got that crisp edge. Okay, that's cool. Uh, another one from Michael from um, Prem. Um, do you plan or pre-visualize your image? Uh, it's a good question. Um, it depends what, um, it depends what type of work I'm making. Um, with the HDR stuff, it's impossible to. Um, and I guess also with the multiple exposures, similarly. Um, but when it's just abstracting the flora, um, I mean, I can see it through my viewfinder and I can spend however long getting um, that sort of uh, perfect point. Uh, so yeah, I'm constructing it, I guess, like a photographer through um, through my viewfinder, but the rest of the process is no, um, not really. Mm. Okay, all right. So, so it 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 will vary from time to time, which is yeah, excellent. Um, and from Lizzie, um, from Sue, uh, could you explain the process you used for the tulip? The tulip. I think oh. that was one of the images that you shown. Yeah. Yes. Um, that. That was photographic paper, um, and then it was placed between under glass. With well, the flower was put, the tulip was put on top of the glass, on top of the photographic paper, um, and it was exposed to the sun. Wow! So, but but I have to say that print, the lumen print is not stable and it has to be kept in a, a black box um, and if I wanted to fix it I could fix it chemically um, which I probably will do in the end but it would probably change it. We, we need to draw things to a conclusion so thank you so much to Lizzie and Michael I found that absolutely fascinating I've been completely engaged with what you've been saying and, and, um, and, and all the different aspects of the work that you've been showing. And, and I hope other people have enjoyed it as much as I have.